Hey Vortexers, welcome back to the channel. I am Kazi, I am your astrologer and tarot reader here at the Venus Vortex and today we are going to be discussing the Mars retrograde as I like to call this the masculine hero's journey. This retrograded energy started on the 30th of October 2022 and it will be going until January 12th 2023. This is a very very important transit because Mars is a masculine planet. It is the ruler of Aries. So all Aries will be affected, whether you are masculine or feminine. All Scorpios, because it is a co-ruler of Scorpio, will be affected, masculine and feminine. And all males in general, from every single star sign, will be affected by this energy on some level. So it retrogrades at the 25th degree. And this happened on Halloween, which is quite auspicious spiritually. So this is really saying that this is a masculine spiritual awakening. That sentiment is echoed when it moves and, and finishes its retrograde at the eighth degree of Gemini. This is actually the royal star, the Aldebaran, which is in Gemini. And that actually is a very special star because it relates to the Archangel Michael. So this suggests that people who have eight degree, particularly the Mars, on their charts in Gemini are actually going through a very angelic awakening. So their spiritual mission that is going to benefit humanity is going to become very clear over this time period. I will be doing a video on the Royal Stars of Astrology. So make sure that you tune into that if this affects you. So it's if you have an eight or a nine degree in Gemini, then this is I'm talking to you about this. You'll need to watch that video coming out. But when this planet goes direct from the eight degree, it will go all the way through to conjunct with the galactic center at the end of this cycle. So what this tells us for all men is that not only is there an awakening for your masculine hero journey, you're actually going to go into a huge introspective point throughout the whole of 2023. Your masculinity will be challenged. So it's very important that you get your structures of understanding what it is to be a man because it's going to be severely tested next year. So we're going to talk about masculinity today and some role models. Firstly, we're going to explore the themes of the astrological phenomena that's going on. And then we will talk in more detail about some examples of some healthy masculinity that will help to guide you on the start of this introspective period. So the 25th degree of astrology is known as the explosion degree. However, I actually interpret this degree as the self-sabotage degree, how you deconstruct the things that you've built. So this is really symbolizing how you hinder your own creations and are destructive in your interpersonal relationships. So this really relates to anger issues in communication, behavioral patterns relating to self-sabotage. And what this degree point really wants to benefit you in is developing confidence, developing strength and reverence to make you more dignified and to be able to carry yourself in a charismatic and leadership oriented way. It does this by encouraging you to change the way that you think about self-sacrifice, innocence, being gentle, being timid and kindness. You can change these relationships by managing inconsistency, arrogance, violence and impiety. It's very important to note that when Mars retrogrades, it behaves like a Venus energy but it's the Venus that burns you out. So this is really talking about in the context of love, this is talking about the love that burns you out because the retrograde ends at the eight degree. We've already been through the eight degree before. So knowing the love that burns you out relates to love interests or love events on the 4th and 6th of September. So, the lesson that you're meant to have learnt and finished by the end of this retrograde, you've already seen the seed emerge 
at that particular date. So try and go back through messages or through, you know, Facebook posts or any of that to try and trigger what that lesson might be about for you personally. Now, during this particular time period, there are some beautiful blessings that come your way. So you can develop success in literature, music or art, marriage, health gains, and improve creative abilities. So focus on these during the transit. If you direct your personal power that you exercise in your relationships, if you do this incorrectly, you will experience abnormalities in your love life. So I'm going to clarify what that means. So you will have an increased likelihood of displaying behaviors. Now I'm not diagnosing here that correlate with these next few conditions. So erotomania, obsessive love, attachment disorder, and relationship OCD. So erotomania, also known as de Clarenbot syndrome, is categorized as a rare psychiatric disorder where individuals have delusions of another person being infatuated with them. More commonly observed in females who are sexually inexperienced, dependent and shy, the object of delusion, so the person they are obsessing over, is usually beyond their reach in terms of social, financial situations, marital status, or their actual interest in the person. This is often a condition that involves a celebrity, for example. Obsessive love disorder is categorized as an obsessive compulsive condition where the person will exhibit most of these behaviors. Possessive thoughts, spying, constant contact, hypersensitivity, controlling behaviors, intense jealousy, low self-esteem, disbelief in the relationship, and validation seeking behavior. Often these affect the person's ability to function in daily tasks due to the obsessive and compulsive nature of the thoughts and the actions associated with this condition. It's often triggered in relationships. So attachment disorder is where, where a person does not experience a proper bond with their primary caregiver as children. For attachment to occur, a child must receive the following, nourishment, touch, eye contact, movement, and smiles. In some cases, these factors are also present where the child experiences abuse, neglect, separation from their primary caregiver between ages six months and three years of age, or frequent changes in their caregivers. So for example, having step parents or foster care parents. As a result, adult attachment disorders types can occur. They normally go into two categories, although there are other types of attachment disorder. So the two types are avoidant attachment and anxious attachment. In avoidant attachment, they have fears of intimacy. So this can be things like physical touch, expressing that they love people, those sorts of things. Compulsive self-reliance is the next factor that they tend to express, lack of trust, and anger issues or anger management. The second type of attachment is anxious attachment. The characteristics that anxious attachment normally possess are clingy and insecure behaviors, compulsive caregiving, and jealous and possessive behaviors. And last but not least, relationship OCD. So relationship OCD is categorized as a fear-based obsession that is ritualized and then a neutralizing behavior, so something that settles the anxiety or fear, is developed to suppress the emotions involved. And this is repeatedly performed as the anxious thoughts or feelings arise. Now it's important to note that an emotion or a thought can occur every nine seconds. So you could imagine how this condition could be quite debilitating in nature for the person who is experiencing it. And it would be quite apparent in its presentation. So these fears are often partner focused, relationship focused and triggered. They often need constant reassurance. Common fears that are expressed by people who have relationship OCD are, do they love me? Do I love them? Are they right for me? Did I make the right decision? Are they loyal and faithful? Can I handle their flaws? 
often the presentation would occur very, very repetitively. So these are normal, rational fears that come up generally between the one and three months of a relationship dynamic. If you have fears that are going on beyond that period, you are moving into some kind of mental illness or trauma related condition. So it's important that we recognize that it's okay that symptoms come up that are very similar in these conditions, but it's how long they go for and whether they're continually and repeatedly occurring in our relationships, which make them toxic or damaging to the relationship dynamic and can be an indicator of mental illness. So we wanna be keeping an eye out for any of these factors that are coming up that have been mentioned in the conditions rather than looking for a diagnosis themselves. However, if you do happen to have a lot of those symptoms, please go and seek medical professional help. But if not, this could be an awareness that perhaps you have some unhealthy dynamics going on in your interpersonal relationships and your attitudes and belief systems towards love may need some altering and changing to become into a more balanced paradigm. If you are experiencing your Mars return during this period, so from the 8th degree to the 25th degree of Gemini, then you have great military preferment, but you are also going to be very accident prone, particularly the hands and shoulders. So be very careful during this particular transit. Fevers are also very likely, so up your health routines. In addition to that, people with the 8th degree to nine degree placements. You will be able to receive honors, preferential treatment, good fortune and favors from women. And the culmination date, so the date that you're likely to receive this, if you interact with this energy well, is on the 21st of April of next year. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to masculinity now. So we're gonna talk about unhelpful masculinity expression first and then we're going to talk about helpful masculine expression and I'm going to give you an example of somebody who role models that incredibly well so you have somebody to look up to unhelpful masculine expression it's also known as toxic masculinity I don't like using that phrase because I don't think that it's very positive so it's expression of homophobia misogyny dominance through violence, struggles with expressing vulnerability, issues with taking accountability and taking into consideration the emotional needs of others, allowing them to express their emotional states in the context of others. The contrast of that, so helpful masculine expression is being a provider, a protector, being brave, being determined and being ambitious. So I'd like to give you a film to watch, a little bit of homework. Lord of the Rings particularly focus in on the character Aragorn. So Aragorn is aspiring to be a king, but he actually doesn't set out with that intention. He realizes through his journey that he is the best person suited for that role. And that role will enable him to help people. He is a very beautiful expression of both masculine energy and feminine energy without compromising his masculine tones and energy. And that's what makes him such a great role model. There's a particular scene that I think is very paramount in the expression of this. And it's actually when Boromir dies. Sorry for the spoiler alert if you've never watched it. But in this scene, he actually comforts Boromir he talks about how strong he was and this is shortly after they fight a large amount of orcs he's dying though and he holds him and he comforts him he praises him he bows his ego and he physically comforts him he shows mourning and expression through a very teary look in his eyes and he also kisses his forehead as he passes he hands him his sword to give him honor, to give him dignity as he's passing. This is such a beautiful masculine expression of emotion, of compassion. But if we dig a little bit deeper, he's showing that he can be vulnerable. His friend is dying. 
he's showcasing that he can emotionally express in that time period and express the feelings that as they are unfolding, he openly mourns. He kisses the head of his friend. So that's male on male, okay? So there's no fear of homophobia or the judgment of expressing that emotion from his fellow men or losing some kind of reputation in that process. Furthermore, he was the one who was leading them. He had to fight the orcs and he actually made the decision as the leader. Now, although that's not highly expressed in the film, you could suggest that he is taking ownership by comforting his friend for his failings as a leader. I don't think that he failed, but that's up to your own interpretation of this. By comforting him, he's taking that responsibility. He's showing that sometimes you make decisions that aren't favorable for all of your men and all of your people. And that he acknowledges that, that he realizes that potentially he failed to protect and provide for his people in that moment, which is part of that masculine energy. So this is a really great example. The whole film is full of it and I can't stress enough how great it would be for you all to watch it, to have somebody who showcases the softer and the harder aspects in a really attractive way. <laughs> Ultimately, this period is for you to work out how you want to conduct yourself in your relationships. If you have issues with anger, with violence, with expressing yourself and managing those things, this is a time to learn those skills and to really hone in on them, to clarify how you feel about love and how you feel about yourself and how you choose to express that in the world. This is about you stepping into what it is to be a man for you and understanding that on a deeper level and being willing to change the way that you express it if it's unhelpful, to be open to being a leader and stepping up in the world and really helping humanity to become better. Thank you so much for joining me here at The Vortex. Bye.